Good morning! It is about 9.30 on October 23rd. It's a Monday morning. It has been a really, really long weekend, <laughs> which followed um, a really long week. My husband had a vacation from work last week, so he was home and I couldn't do videos and he's constantly in my face, <laughs> wanting to know what I'm doing and not in a creepy way, but just a curious what are you up to today kind of uh, manner which I'm not really accustomed to <laughs> he only gets three weeks off a year so I try to I try to cope as best as I can and he won't because he's a retail manager uh, for a retail store he's actually not going to be allowed to take any time off until well after Christmas at this point so um, it was kind of our last shot to spend some time together and this past weekend to spend some time together as a family um, which was really nice. We carved a pumpkin and um, mostly though my husband's not been feeling very well. He, since the week before, he's been battling um, a broken tooth um, that had a cavity, cavity and a filling and the filling popped out and the tooth broke. And the week before last, the tooth abscessed and his jaw was really swollen. So we, we don't have medical insurance or dental insurance. He went to an urgent care clinic and got a prescription for um, an antibiotic to tend to the infection. Um, but the tooth still needed to come out. So we found um, a dentist that would help. Um, they ended up sending us home and then not being able to help us until the next day but on Friday he had the tooth pulled um, and he still has the infection so they actually gave him a second round of antibiotics but he had the tooth pulls um, it, it was not something that we could we could save at that point but hopefully um, especially with the second round of infection I know that some you know dental infections can go into your heart and he's yeah Hopefully this is going to be it for him. <laughs> he unfortunately needs quite a lot of um, dental procedures anyway. He's he's 43. He just has really bad teeth. Um, a lot of the people in his, his family have unfortunately just really bad teeth. So um, he, he's made it this long with most of his natural teeth. And most of them are just going to kind of continue to give him problems, unfortunately. It seems like every couple of years we deal with another tooth that... That tries to kill him. <laughs> Poor guy. Uh, so anyway, so he's had the tooth removed. He's back to work today. Thank God. <laughs> I'm so relieved. <laughs> um, and my daughter's back at school today. So it's like, oh, finally. Um, my desk is kind of right in the entranceway when you walk into the home. It becomes kind of a, a catch-all for the whole family. And just after the weekend, it just, ah, it's been crazy. So I'm looking forward to um, showing off a few things uh, that I've been up to in the past week. And then I'm actually going to do a nice big clean. I'm going to do a thorough clean um, of my area. And I'll usually, I'll, I'll stream some of my favorite uh, video game streamers on Twitch. Or I'll catch up on some YouTube shows or something while I'm, while I'm cleaning. So I'm kind of looking forward to that. Um, I have to apologize for not being a regular uploader. We are working with really poor quality DSL internet and we've had the company out here numerous times and they keep saying that everything is perfect and everything should be zipping along at super speeds and it never is so um, I end up having to upload my videos overnight while everybody's sleeping and because that's the only only time I can do it I can't do it during the day because nobody else can use the internet it just it hogs so much I'm not sure if bandwidth is the right word I'm not much of a computer person it just hogs so much of the internet that you can't nobody else can do anything while it's uploading so I tend to do it overnight and I had a video uploading overnight still trying to catch up with videos from before last week when hubby was on vacation and the computer did a restart <laughs> a restart at some point and it stopped uploading so I have to start that all over again <laughs> so now I think I have like four or five different videos in the queue that I'm just waiting to be able to upload overnight so I can get caught up so I'm probably until we move uh, hopefully this summer this upcoming summer and can get some actual real high-speed internet that's kind of what I'm dealing with <laughs> anyway so um, this is gonna be part one of two two videos it turns out I have so much stuff to talk about I've decided to split it into two videos um, so other than hubby not feeling well 
Um, we just did a lot of just hanging out and catching up on movies. We really wanted to start watching Game of Thrones. We don't have television here. Um, we wanted to start uh, watching Game of Thrones, and we keep going to the library to borrow the first season, and it's never there. So, <laughs> so we didn't get to binge watch that. We did watch a little Netflix and get caught up in a few documentaries that we wanted to watch, but fun other than that. Um, I've been doing some reading, which is really nice. I love to read. I can read tons of books a week, but unfortunately I have work to do. <laughs> so I never, I never do that. I try to aim to, to finish at least one book a week. Um, <clears throat> and I love my local library and I have a vast personal collection of favorites that I'll reread over and over again. Um, right now what I'm currently reading that I borrowed from the library, um, is a book about a biography about Apollo 8 um, and mostly Frank Gorman one of the, the astronauts and oh my goodness there's gonna be pictures I'm not very far into it um, I do love I do love astronauty stuff uh, one of my favorite movies is Apollo 13 which is based on a on a true story uh, the gentleman that wrote this book is the one that co-wrote uh, Jim Lovell's autobiography with him about Apollo 13 um, and I believe that I did actually read that but I love space stuff. It just seemed interesting. Um, I do love fiction, but I, I love a lot of nonfiction. And the book that I had just completed before that, which I bought from Amazon, is Smoke Gets in Your Eye and Other Lessons from the Crematory by Caitlin Doty. Caitlin has a YouTube channel, and I'll link it down below, uh, called Ask a Mortician, uh, where she talks a lot about the death industry and about death itself. She's very... She, well, she's, first of all, she's adorable. She has a fabulous personality. She's just absolutely adorable. Uh, she is... Um, she is an actual mortician, and she runs a nonprofit funeral home way out in California on the other coast. Uh, she does a lot of content that I find really interesting um, and entertaining. This is actually her first book. She has a second book that's just come out that I've not read yet. I wanted to read this one first. I've only been watching her YouTube channel for about six months, so um, I wanted to, to get this and, and get caught up. I, I picked this up on Amazon. Uh, so her second book is out. She's actually on book tour right now. Um, if you follow her Instagram, she's, she's been posting a lot of pictures. Uh, I've been trying to get, trying to, trying to get my local library to buy her, her book that's out now. Sometimes if you put in a request, the library will, um, uh, we'll purchase it. Uh, the other one that I'm trying to get the library to buy right now is the new um, Alison Weir book. <clears throat> the new nonfiction Alison Weir, which uh, I'm sure that they're going, they tend to, to pick up a lot of the Alison Weir stuff anyway, so they'll probably get it. I just don't know when, and it's really irritating. Anyway, so moving on. Um, one thing that I found, um, I was doing some dusting. Um, and I'll show it at the end of the video because I actually have to pick up the camera to show you, but my husband found a, uh, for free at the side of the road, a 12 by 12 paper, pla clear plastic stackable paper holder, which is like, oh, it's like the holy grail of free, you know, free stuff for the paper crafter. So I'm super excited about it. Some of the shelves were a little cracked, so we just patched them up with some tape and, of course, it was quite dirty, so we washed it. It's just, uh, I have it kind of, I haven't, haven't figured out exactly how I want to have it set up. So I've been kind of playing with it, and I have some stuff in it right now, and I'll show it at the end of the video, because I have to pick up the, I actually have to pick up the camera off the tripod to show it off, and I don't want to do that yet, because I won't be able to get it back on the tripod. Um, so anyway, so I've been moving paper off the um, cabinets behind me into the, into the tray, which is now next to me. So I've been doing some dusting as I've been coming, and I kind of forgot that I found some goodies when I was yard sailing this summer. Um, I found some vintage ribbons. Um, the person I bought this from says that these are from the 20s and 40s. So some pretty ribbons and I keep, I keep forgetting that they're there. <laughs> um, I might like to get them attached to um, some fuse tape or something and use them in my paper crafts somehow. But they were too lovely to pass up. I just, I love the florals on these. It's so beautiful. And the ruffled one. And then we've got, this one kind of reminds me of the Corel blue and white china. So this one apparently is from the uh, 20s to 40s. And... Here we go, 50s to 70s, and they do, they do look like they were from the 50s and 70s, these ones here. I love this one. 
It seems to me almost like this one is the same manufacturer as these ones, so I'm not sure if their dating uh, is super accurate or if they were just kind of guessing based on the pattern what kind of genre, genre it belongs versus or era it belongs versus actually knowing for sure. So I probably wouldn't take their word on it as gold to try to, you know, actually tell somebody that these are definitively from an era. But I think I would just say that it's a piece of vintage trim that I've used to trim the card. This, I think, is my favorite. I love that it's nice and wide. <clears throat> Already kind of scheming today on ways to do, things to do with this. Hopefully, I won't forget about them again because I keep forgetting about them. <laughs> Um, and I also picked up, I just have this bag of shoelaces that I wasn't sure if I wanted to find a craft to do with them or just kind of keep them because I don't know when they need some shoelaces. Um, the other thing that I found that I'm just digging out now as I'm dusting is I, I found these um, canvas crafting aprons. And I think that I picked them up so that Leah and I could each decorate our own and have a, a nice crafting ribbon for when we do our paints and when we play with our jelly plate and stuff. I'll have to ask her how she wants to decorate that. So something else that I've been working on is um, kind of some prep work for my daughter's school Halloween party, which is coming up on Halloween. So gosh, a week from tomorrow. So I'm um, in charge of the non-food treat. Excuse me, just a, a sip of my coffee. This is a lovely cup that my landlord gave me for my birthday last month. She gives me a coffee mug every year. I love her. She's fabulous. <clears throat> anyway, so I'm in charge of the non-food treat. Uh, so I, I showed in the previous video, I showed these pencils that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. So I was thinking, what if I can combine the pencils with a paper lollipop that I've been doing often. But I want the children to be able to actually use the pencils after and not actually hot glue a lollipop to the pencil because I want them to be able to take the top off and, and use the pencil as a pencil. So it's taken some trial and error, but I've developed kind of this um, lollipop topper. Uh, I did the first batch and they kind of just fell apart. <laughs> These are the, this is how far I've got so far. I need to make one more batch of these. Um, there's 12 kids in the class. I'll make 16 so that there's a few spares and maybe the teacher can have some, who knows. Um, so I did the first batch the same way that I assembled my other lollipops and just kind of left them. And then I noticed a couple days later that the, the circle parts were popping off and the, uh, the rosette was just, it was all over. So I figured that the difference is when making when making the regular lollipop, I'm hot gluing the straw. This, by the way, is one that my friend Betsy made and not one that I made. I'm just using it as an example because all my pre-made ones have been sent to their, their new homes already. Um, when assembling it and, and adding the straw, I hot glue the straw right in there. So I think that the reason why those rosettes were staying together was because the hot glue that I had used to hold the straw in was holding the whole thing together. And I didn't want to use any hot glue with this project because I want the child to be able to use the pencil. So with, I took my hot glue gun and I put several circles, I, I filled the center. I left one side of the circle on. And then on the side with the circle that wasn't on it, I filled the center with hot glue and then I put a couple loops of hot glue around and put the top. And that seems to be holding much better, much firmer, no real issues. And now I think that I can just slip the pencil right in and give them away to the children. And then they can just pop the pencil right out and use it later. Sort of a non-permanent a non lollipop top. And then they can use this. They can, I'm only going to decorate one side and they can hang it on their bedroom wall or something maybe. Um, and they're obviously not decorated yet. I'm going to make some, die, some Halloween die cuts to do those. And I'll go on to that in a little bit because I have an idea on how to do those which is pretty exciting. So um, yeah, I'll talk about that a little bit in the, the next video because there's something, uh, a haul item from the next video that has to do with the, with those. <laughs> Experimenting that I'm going to do with those. So um, 
I guess the most exciting thing that's happened to me <laughs> this week, I've been talking since August about my pre-order for the Shadowbox card dies from Lawn Fawn. And I ordered them from a cherry on top because you get a 20% discount when you buy a pre-order through them. And they've just continually been backordered and backordered and backordered. Oh my God. You guys, I finally got it. <laughs> I almost cried. It was so, I was so happy to get it. I almost cried. So here it is. Yay. Um, I am super excited to have this. It's a little bit too late to do any, any of my, you know, Halloween plans with it. Um, I might do a few Christmassy things with it. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm just, just getting ready to move into the really, really busy season. I think I've probably got an, another week to two weeks of kind of the calm before the storm with my Etsy shop before the Christmas card orders start coming in. And also I not, it probably not, not until Thanksgiving ish, uh, but I do also offer, um, note card and greeting card sets, which will start to sell as gifts and stocking stuffers at that point as well. So, <laughs> so I am fully aware that I don't have much time left to play before the calm, before the storm comes. So, um, I am trying to, I'm trying, trying, really trying hard to tie up a lot of loose ends. I have another, I have a November for next month, a November, um, scrap swap, which I showed you my October one. So I have one coming up from November, which isn't that, that big of a deal. Um, it's essentially just the same thing that I did in October. Just, you know, whatever scraps I have at that point are going in a, going in a bag. And I picked up another bag. I uh, they with my Ocean State job, but still had them. So, uh, two forty nine. I picked up another one. So all of my scraps will go in here and those will go to my, my buddy. So that one is not, not particularly hard. I'm still working on the snowman flip book. My October, uh, my Thanksgiving autumn theme flip book already went to its recipient. And I know she's gotten it because she, um, she, posted it on Instagram and also she's gonna she said she wanted to show it off on her her YouTube channel which is great um so I know I know all of those things are coming <laughs> um and other than that in our personal Christmas cards um I'm trying to get caught up on my pen pal letters which I have three or four of them that I want to get through in the next couple of days, I want those to mail before Wednesday. Um, I have a few regular sales for my Etsy shop that I need to to work on. So I'm trying, trying to do that. So I, all these things that I need to do before I can really, really play with this now, it kind of got pushed on the back burner, but I am super happy to have it. I even made a little box just playing with the, um, with the accessory dies that come with this. I made this for Leah, just a little, little birdie. She's super happy to have it. She loves it. She let me borrow it to show it off. Just a little diorama. I was thinking too that something like this might make a nice gift in itself uh, for a pen pal or somebody that you normally wouldn't give gifts gifts to necessarily, but uh, this itself would slip nicely into <clears throat> like a five by seven Christmas card if you made a diorama. Just a little piece of decor that they could have, you know, Christmas time decor and it folds up and stores nicely. So I think that would be cool. So maybe that's something that I'll work on after Christmas is work on <clears throat> making a bunch of these for gifts. I just, it's so adorable. I'm so happy to have it and it cuts so well and it's so nicely engineered. And there are so many things that you can do with this. So um, if you can get your hands on it, I highly recommend it. Um, the last thing that I wanted to point out in this video, I've got my, my little checklist. Um, the last thing that I wanted to point out in this video was I got my latest issue of Card Making and Paper Craft Magazine, which is exciting. I, this is a uh, British publication and it's, it's pretty expensive to get in the UK. Sometimes you can find them at bookstores or at Joanne's or something. Um, I, they had um, a promotion where it was uh, $9.95 pence nine pounds and 95 pence something like that whatever the the british um equivalent uh, i think that the american equivalent is around 15 dollars or something um anyway so they had a promotion where you get two of their magazines and um so i did that and this is the second one but i got a letter in the mail from them a couple weeks ago saying that it was about to expire we're automatically going to renew it at that price so sweet keep renewing it at that price because it's still about half of what the um, 
what the shelf rate is. <laughs> Super. I love these magazines. Um, they, I find them so inspirational. I This is the first time I've actually taken it. I cut the top off, but I didn't take it out of the bag. First time I've taken it out of the bag. I will pack these in my bags um, for reading material um, when I do my volunteer shifts every week. So I will take this with me on Friday when I go to the clinic. Um, and if it's a slow day, then I can peruse for the bag. I absolutely love that card. Oh my goodness. Very excited. One of the weird things about this magazine, though, is everything is, um, you know, large square cards. And, of course, it costs more in the U.S. To, to mail a square card. So if I see something, look at these papers. If I see something that inspires me, I try to um, I try to make it um, an A2 or an A7 card. This one also came with some free gifts. Uh, we have an embossing folder that has a fireplace on it and says Christmas wishes and little stamp set oh and a little die and a little die for the stocking so this is cute and this is the project they made with it it's really cute I probably not this year but I'll get some use out of this maybe for next year uh, I'll probably be definitely taking that sleeping kitty image, though. I'll be using the kitty all year round. It's very cute. So anyway, so that is um, my kind of chit-chat and get caught up. Caught up. Um, I'm trying a new recipe tonight. It's some kind of... It's like a brown sugar chicken thigh thing. I'm not usually a huge fan of chicken thigh, but... Whatever, my daughter and my husband love dark meat, so we'll give it a try. I found the recipe on Pinterest. I'll probably have um, pictures and stuff on my Instagram when it's all cooked. Um, and I'll link my Instagram down below. It's kind of a, a lot of paper craft stuff, but it's a lot of just mishmash of everything, everything going on. I'm going to try to attempt to get my phone off the tripod to show off. Moving along, the paper rack. I don't know if you can see it. Try to adjust. So this is the paper rack that my husband brought home for me. So I'm in the process of kind of trying to figure out how I want to get it set up, but I absolutely love it and it's gonna free up a lot of space that I can put other stuff in. <laughs> anyway, so that is just about everything that I have for this first part and stay tuned for the second part, which will be uploaded probably on another day uh, with a couple of more just straight haul stuff going on. Uh, thank you very much and take care.